and then start video. Oh, I see. Start. Should I hit start video? Yeah. I'm in my baby's room, so. Uh... Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Wait. All right. I, I think I started it. Can you see me? Yeah. All right. Wait. Let me get rid of this thing. There we you are. are. Hey, we man. are live. There we go. And look what's right behind you. Oh, oh, yeah. This is my office. The Police Academy Six. That's. But this is my office. That's the only. Uh, only poster I have in here, actually. So, uh, how old's your baby? She is going to be three months on the 25th. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, Christmas baby. Oh, that's great. Yeah, ex exciting. Wow. First one? First one. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, it's great. I work from home, so it's like perfect. Very cool. Yeah, man. You do, you do a podcast? Yeah, so... I've always loved like movie sequels and everything that has to go. I'm sure you probably are in the same boat. Like I just, some, some of them are just so fascinating to me. Uh, whether it be the police Academy series, how it seems like everyone, it worked. They kept a lot of this, most of the same people. Yeah. And it just, and it was year after year and yeah. it was something that actually worked. And then there was like a movie that we did for our first episode with Son in the Mask with Jamie Kennedy. Like that was like 11 years later after Jim Carrey's The Mask. And it was like, it really didn't connect too much. So it's yeah. funny how some sequels like get it and then other ones just want to put that name on it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, this really, I mean, I, I don't know. Have we started the podcast? Yeah. Oh, we're in it. Okay. We're in it. We are in it. <laughs> <laughs> This really had, it did have, uh, it had kind of a formula where, I mean, they understood what they had. They released Police Academy every year uh, at spring break. For the oh, okay. Kids. So they knew the audience was out, their audience was out of school, uh, had time on their hands and ready to see a movie. And every year we opened at number one. Uh, year after year after year after year. So they, they really knew what they were doing with that. And I do think they were smart bringing back the core group of people because we really got very close. And um, it was, you know, I used to say it was like going to camp where we'd, you'd see this, you'd see your buddies again. And then they're, they're the, there's a, the producer over there is the camp counselor. And uh, it, we got, you know, very tight. It was really fun. Yeah, no, it seems that way, and especially with comedic timing. I did a little research on you beforehand. Yeah, that's my dog trying to get on my lap. <laughs> oh, it's okay. My dogs are in the other room because they'll start barking. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, like, comedic timing is huge, and it was cool. Like, before I looked up everything on you, yeah. I was like, I, I bet you he has an improv background. Right, yeah. And that was so neat. Yeah, yeah, I came from Second City in Chicago. Yeah, that's amazing. And, um, and, and that's, that's, you know, where, uh, you know, well, when I started out, I, I, I studied in, in college and I wanted to be an actor. Where'd you go to school? I went to Vanderbilt. In oh, nice. And you're from Ohio? I'm from Cleveland, right. So are you excited right now? Are you a Browns fan still? Well, yeah. I'm, I'm nice. At Odell, uh, I'm a Giants fan, so I was pretty hard for it. I have a Giants tattoo right on my arm. <laughs> It's okay. So, yeah. well, finally, finally, we're trying to put something together. We'll see no, I'm happy. Or not, but you know, we've had we've had our, our share of heartbreak too. Yeah. Like, LeBron's out here in, in Lakerland. I know. They're not doing anything because he has no help. But, yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, yeah. So I, I yeah, I, I grew up in Cleveland, and I, 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 uh, I went down to school in Nashville and uh, studied there, and then I went to. I, I did theater. Um, I went to Actors Theater of Louisville for a year where I apprenticed. And then I went up to New York. And I'd always seen, um, like when I was a kid and I'd watch The Tonight Show, for instance, I'd see funny people on there. And a lot of them, I noticed, had something in common. And as they'd talk to Johnny, they they it would come out, oh, they were at Second City. So I, I, I thought, well, what is this Second City thing? Yeah. And I'd heard about it, and I, uh, after I spent some time in New York and, and, and had no more money left, I went out on the road on a one-man show and made enough money to either go back to uh, New York and just struggle or go to 
a city that I thought might be a little more uh, reasonable financially. It's not much, but a little bit. And I'd always heard of Second City, so I, I went there and started studying at Second City and got and, and joined the company. Wow. So did you start, did you train under, who'd you take classes from? Del Close? Del Close, yeah. It's amazing. Del, Del was the man then. And um, I mean, you know, there were a lot of other people, Josephine Forsberg and, and uh, Stuart Pankin. Um, but Del was my, my uh, he, he directed like half of the productions that I was in. Bernie Solins, who was the uh, producer of the theater, directed the other half. And it was just a great time to be there. Who else is there at that time? Any of the people that you were in class with, like, go on to do anything? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, well, the, in the company, when I was in the touring company, uh, the company just before me um, was like George Went and oh, okay. Tim Kazarinski. When Tim went to Saturday Night Live, I took his, I, I went, I was his replacement. In the oh, company. wow. So, uh, and then my company was uh, Jim Belushi and Danny <laughs> and uh, Mary Gross, um, you know, and a lot of people have done a lot of stuff. Dan Castellaneta was right after me. Okay. He, Homer Simpson. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of people have done a lot of stuff. That's awesome. So just going back, I know, what year was this in Chicago, like when you started Second City? Uh, let's see. I, I, I was in the touring company from 78 to, to 80, and then okay. I was in the touring company from 80 to 83. Okay. I came out to Los Angeles in 1983. All right. So sometimes these things aren't right, and I don't know how much you edit, like your IMDb, but it has your first credit as a short on a short-lived series called The Duke. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. that's right. That, that was shot back in Chicago. I was still at Second City. Oh, cool. City. I was still at Second City, and uh, that was Robert Conrad. Yeah, it was like an ex-cop that turned into a detective, I think it yeah, was. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and he, you know, do you, did you know who, do you, you're probably too young to even know Robert Conrad. It sounds familiar. Bob Conrad, he was a guy, he, he used to do a series of commercials for, I think, Ever Ready, where he put a battery. Oh, the battery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I Robert agree. Conrad was in Wild West, right? Wild, 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 West? Wild, Wild oh, West? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And he was a great guy. I mean, he, this guy. He was, he was so loyal to his friends. I wasn't one of them. I mean, was, <laughs> I was a kid. So, yeah. uh, you know, I just came in, but I saw how loyal he was to his friends. And he had guys, you know, on his crew and staff and, and in the cast who'd been with him for years, Larry Minetti. Um, and then there was another guy, I can't remember his name, but a football player that he had known oh, wow. that, that he, he put behind the bar in the bar scenes, he was like the bartender, but he was just a really good guy. And, uh, yeah, that was the, like, the, I was so excited, you know, to be working with, oh, I bet. Well, the work would be working with anybody, but yeah. then, and Bob Conrad, he was so nice. And he actually, uh, I don't know what he saw in me, but he, he had me, he pulled me aside and said, listen, I want you to coach some of these guys. Like I, I coached like the football player, just like acting stuff, but wow. just to make it more natural and stuff. But I really appreciated that he had that confidence and, you know, and he, he kind of took me under his wing. He, you know, he wouldn't remember any of this, I'm sure, but it made such a huge impact on me being that young and just starting out. I'll never forget how, how kind he was. So that's like your, if the, if there was a, you know, Lance story, <laughs> that yeah. would be, that would be the Lance Kinsey story. That would be it. That moment when Bob got, like, he didn't think he was probably doing anything really that no. maybe something he normally you would do anyway. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. And it gave you that confidence. You're like, wow. That's, yeah, that's the kind of guy he was. He was, he was uh, you know, a really good guy. Did you call home as soon as you were done that day? And Oh, I'm sure I did. Yeah. I said, Mom, guess what? Guess who I was talking to? Uh, <laughs> it was exciting. That is really exciting. That's awesome. And then it has on there, I just go by what's on there. So anytime you have anything else you want to, you know, uh, bump into. And then we'll go back to the police academy, like in your – life order and then it has chicago story yeah that was another really early one yeah look at the people that were in that dennis franz oh, craig t nelson yeah yeah and my I, I i i actually i think i i think i auditioned for a different role 
and I didn't get that. Uh, I auditioned for it. Like there was, there was like a lead guest actor in it who was going to play like this young. Uh, he was like my bro the the brother, and I didn't get that. But they they had me come back and play the, his his brother, and this guy, my guy, was like I think mentally challenged. It was really a wonderful role. It was very dramatic and very um, uh, emotional, That's the, the scenes I did. Unfortunately, I didn't work with Dennis. Uh, I'm so, I was such a you know, fan of his, but I knew him a little bit in Chicago because he was- Oh, okay. Guy. And uh, yeah, it was a, that was a great, great uh, opportunity too. And another exciting thing, it was you know, small, but again, when you're starting out, and you just have an opportunity. I remember the director was so good too. Um, Jerry London was the director. Okay. And he went on and did a lot of stuff, a lot of mini series, and he was really good and really took his time. Um, you know, and again, I was coming from Second City, which was a totally different skill set. You know. Yeah. Now, now I was kind of relying on my theater experience and and the acting. The dramatic acting, which was yeah. really, really fun. Yeah, and, and improv in a little bit. I took a few classes when I lived out in Portland, Oregon. But oh, yeah. there, you still work with emotions, too. So it's so oh, great yeah. that you're able to just combine everything that you learned. Right, absolutely. That's great. And then, then you had a few small roles in Dr. Detroit, yeah. Dan Aykroyd. Yeah, that, uh, was, that was really fun. Um, and then Class with Rob yeah. Lowe. And yeah. I never heard of that movie. That movie seems pretty funny. Oh, class! Yeah, I never seen it. Yeah, so oh, you should check it out. It's uh, it, was, it seems uh, funny. I read the synopsis on it. It looked pretty cool. Yeah, it's Rob Lowe and Andrew McCarthy. And yeah, it was fun because those guys. This is what you know. I was in the company at Second City, and they would come and hang, and hang out. You know, they were younger. And oh, they, okay. And they're like little puppy dogs. Uh, <laughs> it was so cute, and you know, so talented. Both of them, so talented. And, uh, but my scene, I only had one scene in that, but my scene, she was with Jacqueline Bissett. So I don't know if you know who she is. She was, she was a beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. She plays the mom in it. Yeah. She plays the mom, yeah. yeah. And, and I was like this guy in the bar who, uh, she came in and she kind of like, it ended up, I was doing something like doing shots or something and got stuff on my face and she came over and wiped my face with her thumb and that's what i called home about so you're not gonna <laughs> believe what happened today <laughs> no and it was great it was, you know again these were all this was all in the beginning and everything was just so freaking exciting oh definitely and now the interview processes for those they were just like ca open casting call and yeah, i think some of yeah a lot of them were there were a couple of them like i did a cheech and chong movie uh, in Chicago, and I know that they came and saw the show at Second City. Oh, wow. And I got pulled in from that. That's awesome. You know, that was the wonderful thing. You had the advantage of actually having a little showcase that, that you know, if people were in town, a lot of times if people were casting, they would come and see the show. So at least they would, you know, they would know you a little bit when you walked in. Yeah. Was it that, was it as big back then, improv wise? Was there like shows every night and a ton of people that oh, yeah. were doing it? It was huge. I mean, it was, Second City was, as far as I was concerned, it was the place to be. I mean, there were oh, other, definitely. There, there were, uh, if, if for comedy, um, there were, Chicago was a really hot theater town. And yeah. But then um, uh, Steppenwolf was just starting out. So uh, Malkovich and Sinise and, uh, all those guys were uh, uh, Jeff uh, Perry, and um, they, they were all just starting out. Steppenwolf, and yeah. so, and then there was Victory Gardens and St. Nicholas Theater. All these little theaters were really thriving, and Second City was, uh, you know, a hotbed for comedy. Yeah. So, and that was before there were a lot of stand-up clubs there i think there are now zanies and a, a whole bunch of stand-up clubs as well but second city was cut was it and it was it was packed every night uh we did eight shows a week um 
and it was just fantastic. The best training you could possibly have. Yeah, I don't think that I don't think that stand up boom hit until what was that the late eighties when there was a million of places open. Right, yeah. it hadn't had happened yet. No. Or yeah, for the stand up clubs. Yeah, and then next it has on there around the same time. You you were an extra on an SNL sketch. Well, yeah. I mean, what what happened was we did a short film in Chicago. Uh, Jim Belushi um, did. Uh, uh, John Davies was the director and producer, and I don't I don't know who wrote it. It was called Sugar or Plain. Jim might have written it, um, and he had me. It was it was uh, Jim and Rob Riley played. Uh, uh, ice cream scoopers in an ice cream store oh okay and i came in with my date and we ordered ice cream and the whole it was a short little short film and um when jim went to saturday night live he took the film with him and it was on saturday night live oh wow did you know it was coming i think he let me know okay it's like you're watching it and you're like hanging out cracking a beer and you're like hey that's me i'm on saturday night live yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. And then great. It's like, it seems like right after that, I don't know if there was anything else in between, but it seems like right after that, you landed Police Academy too. Well, what happened was I came out here. Um, after that, I did, I did Things Are Tough All Over in Chicago too, which was the, uh, the Cheech and Chong movie. Oh, okay. And then I got uh, married in 1983. And, um, that's when I, well, let's see, I got married, we, we got married in Detroit, and uh, the whole company came up, we, we got, actually got married on a Monday, so that, because the theater was dark on Monday, oh, okay. the, whole, the whole company could come to the wedding then. That's awesome. So everybody came up, Bernie, the, the uh, owner of Second City, actually rented a, uh, a, 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 what do you call it, a limo and drove everybody up. Wow. It was, it was a riot. And they all came up, Fred Cash, who was the, the, the musical director there and the pianist, he was there, my whole company. Um, and after we got married, uh, we did a show, Second City did a show in California, in, in Los Angeles, uh, called The Best of Second City. And I was still at, I was still in the company in Chicago, and everybody else who was in the show in Los Angeles were had graduated. They were uh, alumni. Okay. I, but they had me come out from the show, and I was in it also. Uh, and from that, I got an agent and a manager who came to see the show, and and I got an agent and a manager, and they said you got to you should move out here. <laughs> so I went back, got married, and we moved out after that in 1983 and that's when i auditioned for police academy i actually police uh, auditioned for police academy one and didn't get it I oh wow for Fackler. oh for Fackler. yeah and i didn't get it and bruce <laughs> Mahler got it and he was fantastic um, yeah he was he was a stand-up i think before uh before police academy oh really yeah but he was you know he was perfect for it and then for Police Academy 2, I came back in and auditioned for Proctor. And I remember um, uh, Jerry Seinfeld and I had the same manager. And Jerry, we both went in for the audition. Jer and Jerry? Went, That's amazing. Yeah, that was before Seinfeld. Yeah, 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 definitely. And so I go in, and Jerry's in there in the uh, waiting room of the casting office. And uh, they, uh, you know, we're talking, hey, oh, you're for Proctor too. Well, okay, good luck. And he gets called in and he goes in and I'm sitting there waiting. And after, and then finally he comes out and as he's walking, he's walking <laughs> by me, he leaves down and he goes, it's still available. <laughs> he's walking out the door. <laughs> it was so funny. He made me laugh so hard. And then I went in, and you know, I, I had to go in several times actually, and uh, they kept bringing me back, and finally I got it. Do you remember in your audition? Did you use your? Because one of the great great things about your character is the physical comedy, just how like into it you get. Yeah, I don't. You know, I don't even really remember. Uh, I think I had that. 
that kind of innocence of Proctor. You know? Yeah, which is great. I think I had that in the in the audition. I mean, I think I was kind of nebbishy and I mean, the thing about Proctor is he's he's such so supercilious and such a little a kiss ass. Yeah. That, you know, he just uh, he's just up Harris, either Mauser or Harris's butt the whole time, <laughs> but still wants to try to be tough and yet still wants to be one of the guys. And it's just ridiculous. Yeah. But really, it's it's a there's an innocent quality about him. I mean, he's he he's I, naive and innocent. Um, he reminds me of kind of like a Barney Fife, uh, you yeah. know, a classic. You know, there's there are classic stereotypes kind of, and that's that's what Proctor was, or even like a a Rose Nylon from uh, Golden Girls. Yeah. Was that had that innocence where she just would say things and not understand the, the, you know, what she was saying half the time. I'm sure when you were filming the movie, I'm sure it was probably just a lot of fun. Just with uh, everyone in the cast, it just seems like, how could you not have that good of a time? It was great. It really was fun. And, you know, and I mean, we, we knew we weren't doing Shakespeare. Yeah. But, but it was it was a blast, and uh, you know I was really lucky. I got cast um, in two, and the, and Art Matrano was G. W. Bailey had, had created the role of Captain Harris in, in one. Yeah. Well, I'm not in one. I'm in two, and G. W. is not there now. I think he was off doing mannequin or something. He you know he wasn't. A yeah, yeah, he was a mannequin. Yeah, he was actually a man. He was in a lot of big '80s movies. Mannequin. Oh, a lot of them. And short I'm, circuit I'm, yeah i don't one of those he was he made him unavailable oh, okay so art got cast art matrano and i had never met art and i went in we went in uh together you know on the set meeting for the first time and it was just really magic i mean we 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 had we understood each other's timings timing he was he's so funny and we clicked so that worked, and then we did two and three together, and then I don't know why, but Art uh, wasn't available, and or or they brought GW back. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but all of a sudden, now Art's not there, and his police academy, four, two, three, four, I think, yeah, four, and we're shooting up in Toronto, and I had never met GW, and so I go out to the set for some reason. Now it's not art, it's GW, but it's still Proctor as his sidekick. <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't question it. I just said, okay, great. Yeah. Um, and art, I mean, and, and GW and I, the first scene we did in Police Academy 4, they drove us out to the a river bank uh, in separate cars. I hadn't met him. And then we get out and, hi, this is GW. Oh, hi, this is Lance. Hi, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. And they threw us in a river. And we were going down the rapids, it's like our, 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 the balloon that I shot out of the sky, the hot, I had a hot air balloon, yeah. and crashed into the river. And we are being swept down the river in raging rapids. And downstream, way downstream, just before the waterfalls, they have like a rope strung across and stuntmen there in the water ready to try to grab us before we go over the thing. So we are hanging on to the gondola and racing down, and you bond very quickly with somebody. Yeah. And we did. <laughs> and we've been best friends ever since then. I mean, I, he's one of my best friends today. Wow, well, that's, that's amazing the, that you don't meet a guy, you're shooting a scene, and you're in, in the films, you know, you're his right hand man, yeah. and you just get thrown into it. No, yeah. no, your, your chemistry is amazing. In the yeah. si in Police Academy Six, because that's the one we chose. I like all of them, but for some reason I chose that one. Wow. And then going back, I'm like, you know why? I really love the formula in that one, because there's like two Police Academy formulas. The one is you, know, you have all the comedy, you have the main characters, and then there's a bad guy for the last act. Right. And then I really, for the, some reason, the sixth one was was there a different writer for each of the films? Do you know offhand? Not all of them, but some of them. Uh, Gene Quintano wrote 
uh, well, first, Pat Prof and Neil Israel wrote one. Okay. Uh, Gene Quintano wrote two and three. And then he did, he worked on some of the others as well. They would have him like script doctor and stuff. He was unbelievable. A great writer. Yeah. He wrote many, many, many movies, a lot of action movies and uh, a lot of comedies and directed. Um, and then after Gene, uh, there were, and then there started to be different writers. Uh, and I think there was like a different writer for each one. And I th think the writer for number six, Jeez, I can't remember who that was. No, you know? I can easily, I can pull it up real quick. Yeah. Now, the other reason I asked is just the formula on that one. I think, I think it's almost like half and half with the movies. They'd have like the all the all you guys, and then the end be the bad guy. But with the sixth movie, with those three, uh, with the three robbers, yeah, they were almost like it was like three stooges mixed with like teenagers. <laughs> and then you had the man behind the glass that was pulling all the strings, like shooting out their music of like their boom box and they're just like playing around and it, i don't know it was like so comical and it was it was great yeah no it was fun and you know and ken mars is in that one um and he he was he's a you know an iconic comedic actor too he did you know he was in uh oh, what is it the producers i think was no that? really or no young frankenstein and uh, I, I think one one of the Mel Brooks, but he was a Mel Brooks guy. Oh, okay. But anyway, uh, yeah, no, that's a great cast. It, it is. And GW and I, you know, by that time, we could, you know, we had our 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 chemistry was so tight. We had our our shorthand down. You know, uh, we really hardly had to talk to each other before a scene. We just jump into it. Yeah, and you could see it, and you and you open the film. So. I'm sure most actors do this after a while. You get the script. You're like Proctor, Proctor, where's Proctor? And then I'm sure for the sixth one, I don't know. I, I haven't watched the other ones in a little while, so I could be wrong. But it's not like, but you opened up the sixth movie. It, it was like the first, I would say the first act of the film. It's pretty much just you and Harris, you and GW, uh, you're trying to get the crooks. Whether it be they rob right behind you and you're, sir, Sir, yeah. and he's yeah. like just trying to tell you, and I yeah. think that's just the funniest thing, just the timing with it because it's so perfect. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, wasn't the opening in the office in the dark where we're going around the office with a flashlight? Is that it? No, I thought the first. I thought it was. What is what, it? Was in the beginning? Oh no, was that the beginning when you guys are sitting right outside where they're gonna hit to rob? Oh, maybe. I, I honestly. Doug, oh, it's okay. Run in a little bit to me. Yeah, I know. I mean, I, if you talk about certain scenes, I can remember all the scenes. I'm not sure what movie they were in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, when you do that many. No, I can understand that. But no, it's just yeah. classic. Your timing and just the way you work together, it was so great. It was always uh, it was always a relief when I would look and see that we would have scenes together. You know, I mean, I would just go, oh, this is going to be fun. And uh you know, I would I, I, I love GW so much and his his timing is flawless. And he and he's a great actor also. Yeah. Uh, you know, he happens to be just a, a an incredible talent and it was so much fun working with him. Um it was it just got really easy, you know, and it's nice to have that. It doesn't happen all the time. Yeah, so, some of those serious actors are really good at comedic roles because they're pretty on point you know like leslie nielsen just right oh my gosh yeah. and just like those type of guys and just think i think it just ended last year but gw was on major crimes that show was on for i don't know right. eight nine ten seasons so well, yeah the closer which turned into major yeah crimes, forever yeah and he was great in it oh yeah yeah that's awesome so then, yeah, so I think we covered that. What was your take? Is there any of the films that you ha have more near and dear to your heart? Or is it just oh, all together? Well, I mean, I love them all. I, I, I love, like, uh, I love three because we shot that in Toronto. And the first, uh, the first one I was in was two. We were here in L.A. So it was really fun to go on location. Yeah. Couple, I think we shot three and, three and four in Toronto. Toronto's beautiful. And it was one. It was really fun shooting up there. The people were so great. The crews were great. 
and it was fun being on location with the group. I mean, talk about going away to camp. Yeah. You know, what it felt like. Um, and five was really great too. Well, I remember four. Yeah, four. Um, I was really nervous through the end of four because my wife was pregnant. Oh. Uh. We was do we were shooting in November and she was due on November twelfth. And I gone, Jim Drake directed it. And uh, I went to Jim and I said, listen, you know, I'm a little nervous about this. Uh, if anything you could do to help me wrap by the 12th, you know, I, I surely would appreciate it. And he did. He helped me. He, he, they kind of moved things around in the schedule and got me wrapped out. And I flew home. I kept talking to Nancy on the phone saying, just hang on. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm hurrying. And it was our first child. So a lot of times, you know, it's, it can be a little later than the due date. Yeah. The 12th, I, they, I wrapped on the 12th and flew home and she had the baby on the 14th. Wow. She did wait for me. That's and amazing. And then yeah. I really love Police Academy 5 because we shot that down in uh, Miami. Yeah. And that was great because my whole thing, my, my, my wife and my baby, my son, who was now one at one, came down uh and uh we were we sh and, and her family was down there her mom oh nice in florida so i had that whole family thing going on down there and that was really fun my son celebrated his first birthday there i remember i have pictures of him on, on the set they made a little police academy birthday cake for him that's awesome on, on bubba's lap and a picture <laughs> It's just, it's great, you know, and Janet Jones was holding him. It was really cute, really fun. That's really awesome. How, how intimidating was that the first time you stood next to Bubba? Oh, listen. <laughs> well, Bubba, you know, he's a legend, first of all. Oh, yeah. Football legend. If you're any kind of a sports fan, you yeah. know, kill Bubba, kill. Yes. That was, that was the, the – the, the cry that went up at Michigan State when he would walk out on the football field. Yeah. And um, this guy, he, we became very, very close friends. Um, he, he was just a great guy, uh, you know, huge, powerful, and a gentleman, a gentle giant. Yeah. Uh, but, it, but, he, he, you know, you didn't, you, you, he could put on a front that you wouldn't want to mess with too. Like I, I'd walk in anywhere with Bubba. You don't have to worry if you're with Bubba, but, uh, he, but he's just, he was such a good guy and so great to work with. So funny. He could tell, you know, football stories forever and just keep you enthralled. Um, he was from Texas, a uh, little town, um, in Texas, exactly the same town GW was from. It's funny. Oh, wow. They went to, I think, different high schools, but I think they, they were the same. I think they were there at the same time. And wow. And Janis Joplin was from that same little town and went to high school with GW. So, I mean, you're going, wow, this little, little itty-bitty place made a lot of really fantastic people here. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, Bubba was great. Uh, and, and he's the one, he, he actually got me working out. We, we, we <laughs> went to the same gym. Well, actually, we would work out in, in, like in different gyms wherever we were in Toronto or in Miami. And I didn't know anything about working out. So I was on like Nautilus machines and pumping things and pushing things. And he would walk <laughs> Bubba walked by and he just he leaned down and go, Les, you're just blowing smoke. And I go, what? What do you mean? And he got me. He started me on on a like a, a workout that I still do today. I mean, with like free weights. And, oh wow! Like, I'll do those machines, do the free weights, and I mean, I you know, I don't do I don't do what Bubba did. He could lift a freaking house. Yeah. But and he was he'd tell me stories about like in the gym when he's like pressing ridiculous amounts of weight. He's he's telling me they never he never did this when he played football. In when he played for the Colts, 
uh, he he said they ne he never worked out. He never lifted weights. It was just a natural. They just were naturally fit. And uh, I don't know. I, I think it's a different time than me. Yeah. But he he was gifted with that physical presence that he I guess didn't need to. Um, but he but now he did, and you know later he did, and he could lift a house when I saw him. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, whoever the casting director was for the first one really yeah. nailed it. Like, even yeah. his comedic timing for a guy that's a, supposed to be just like the – when they, maybe when they first looked at him, you know, the big guy of the film and, uh, like, the, like, the scary big guy to be strong. Yeah. It, he, he's hilarious in the movies. And then even, like, a guy like uh, – how was Tackleberry when he wasn't Tackleberry? How was he when he wasn't Tackleberry? Yeah, because that character was so great. It seemed like he was like one of those guys that were like stayed in character because it was always he was always on. Yeah, he was. No, David was. Uh, I mean, he, he wasn't. You know, thank goodness he wasn't always running around polishing his gun. Good. But uh, no, he was a good guy. He he was he was good, but he was Tackleberry-ish kind of. Yeah. You know, he, he was big and, and, you know, he probably would have chased a cat up a tree and then shot it out. He was, you know, he was something. Yeah. That's awesome. And then you had uh, Michael Winslow. Oh, he Winslow. must have been, he must have been just, I don't know how you would not just laugh the whole time being with him. Well, he was somebody, you know, I, he, you know, he really could, he did all those. Oh yeah. Voices. He did them. And, he would also practice them. So I remember one time I was walking uh, down the stairs and he was in a stairwell and kind of facing the wall as I'm around in the corner and he's like doing helicopter noises. And I'm going, geez, Michael, you know, all right, okay, well, he's doing his thing and getting ready, I guess. But, you know, some, sometimes you'd, you'd be you'd, you'd, at, at lunch with him and go, Michael, pass the salt. And he, and you go, John, just pass the salt, man. Come on. <laughs> no, he was, he could do it. He was unbelievable. And he still does his act, I think, all over the world. Yeah, yeah. No, he definitely tours around. I think I saw him, I don't know, it was a few years ago. He was coming into the city. I live in New Jersey, oh, right cool. outside New York City. Where are you now? In Jersey. Oh, you're in Jersey. Okay. Yeah. He, he came into New York? Yeah, yeah. I think I saw his name. Uh huh. Yeah. He yeah. Was. I know he uh, he plays overseas a lot too. I think he's big in Australia. Oh yeah, that's awesome. So great. So Police Academy, that was and that I'll was more than enough. Um, uh, Bobcat. Oh yeah. Bobcat, he's such a good guy, and you know he was here was a guy who always stayed in character for like interviews and stuff. Yeah. He's just he's couldn't be a nicer guy. I mean, you know, I remember my mom came down one time and. Uh, he came over, I, I think, to her apartment, wherever we were staying, to the room or the apartment, and he was ha hanging out with us after dinner, and she just couldn't believe it because he was just this quiet little, you know, quiet, nice guy, and he was so sweet to her and nice, and, you know, she, no one had ever seen him like that. Yeah. That, that character, but he, he's a good guy and talk, you know, when I look at it, when I start breaking them down like this, it's unbelievable the talent they had. Cause all oh, these yeah. guys were so talented. Bobcat, so talented. And and I don't know if you followed his his feature career. He he's a writer director of like independent features that you gotta go back and check out. I mean, just go IMDB him yeah. and go look at some of his movies. They're freaking great. I'll have to check it out. That's awesome. So then right after that, that was great, those stories. And then a few years later, uh, you were Loaded Weapon. Yes, sir. Now, that's Gene Quintano, who wrote Police Academy. Oh, okay. He wrote that, too. Okay. He, he wrote and directed uh, Loaded Weapon. Loaded Weapon 1. That was yeah. the joke of it. Yeah. Uh, it was National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon 1. And that, that was, was great. That was really fun to do. That was Emilio and Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. And... Uh, that that was another great. I thought you know from that was really an underrated movie. I think. I mean that that was a a really good, funny, 
parody movie. Uh, oh yeah. And a lot of people were in that, uh, Kathy Ireland and, but Emilio was great in it. And of course, Sam Jackson's great in everything. Yeah. Freaking everything. That was like movie 20 of his, uh, 450. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then after that, you did some movies I never heard of, but I watched the trailers today that look hilarious. Oh, really? Club Fed. Oh, yeah. Club that Fed cast was, looked great. Yeah, it, that was a very, you know, that another low, but low, low budget, but, but it was fun to do. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't even know if you can get it anymore. I'm sure it's got to be somewhere, but Pauly. Pauly, Pauly Shore? No, Pauly from uh, Rocky. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, he was great. Yeah, there were some great people in there. Yeah. Right? Alan Garfield, too. But yeah, Polly from Rocky. Um, Karen Black was in it. Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of good people. And then, uh, why can't I think of his real oh, name? Uh, George Jefferson. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Sherman Hemsley. Sherman Hemsley, yeah. Right, and, and Judy Landers was my love interest. Oh, okay. Yeah, that I, I was like, uh, I was so lucky for that. Uh, uh again you know got cast and and shot the whole movie uh you know we did it quickly but um judy landers was a was so delightful to work with she was great i don't know if you remember no the sisters judy and audrey uh audrey landers was another was kind of a, a more serious actress who was in um chorus line i remember okay yeah so anyway but they were beautiful beautiful girls and and women and uh they, they were fun to work with all of them but yeah sherman hemsley yeah yeah and then silence of the hams yes i i i did a very little thing in that but that was oh, okay i watched that trailer and i was like how can i never hear even uh mel brooks had a cameo in it yeah and i did a uh I did a scene that parodied um, Basic Instinct with Sharon Stone crossing and uncrossing her legs. Yeah. That scene. I did. I did a parody. Yeah, I saw you. I saw that in the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. So that was fun. And yeah, that, uh, yeah. I don't. Yeah, that was. That was. All, all these are a long time ago. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. No, some of these. A lot. I love. You know, uh, Kentucky Fried Movie. Like all these spoof movies. Yeah. Are so great when they're done right, and then. Obviously, in the last 20 years, there was a bunch of them that just came out that were just like, it yeah, seemed like it was like threw them at the, you know, date movie, disaster. You know, there was like a lot of those movies, but. Right. And then, so with your improv background, whose line? How did that come about? Oh, uh, well, let's see. I know uh, my friend Danny Breen, who was in my company at Second City, he was a. Uh, like a producer on it and he called and, and asked if I wanted to jump on and and be you know be like a creative consultant for it I said sure so I came in and I did three seasons of that um and there were no they, there were no writers for that uh, yeah because it was all improvised and it truly was all improvised oh yeah we would, we would write all the suggestions so coming from Second City uh, they, they, you know, it was good. There was a good background to have um, because you could kind of, uh, you could write the the suggestions in a way that you knew would be good to to improvise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and anything that Drew said uh, was written too, uh, or anything that was on the cards that he read from the cards. Uh, but that was really, uh, uh, you know, an amazing show um, because Ryan and Colin and Wayne are fan just, they're the, t they're so good. They're, they're such great improvisers. Yeah. You know, and, and you do a, a music thing and you can't beat Wayne Brady. You I know. Can, you can do any style, anybody. He would do like the Supremes and do all of them. And it was just unbelievable. And then and and uh, Ryan and Colin, you know, talk about chemistry. Those guys know each other so well and work so well together and are so hilarious. They're just the best, you know. So that was great. They've been doing it together since. When was the first who's who's line over in uh, England? Yeah, ninety 
Three ninety four. Well, before that, they worked together at Second City in Toronto. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they knew each other from uh, Second City. Oh wow! So they've been they've known each other a long time. And that's the best thing about improv, and I'm sure you you can agree with this, is when you do it, when it's over, there's no Monday. You can go back and obviously critique and coach and get notes, but what you just saw, you're you're never gonna see again. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. It's ephemeral. You know, it's like a, it's like a bubble that you watch and then poop, it pops and you're left with the memory of that bubble. Yeah. Right. So the, it's yeah, amazing. It, it's a little magic. It's kind of, it, when it works, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Now, it's painful when it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. I do like a little, cause of the class that I took in Portland and I love it. So I started like another podcast with me and my buddies. They never did improv, but I, I, I kind of coach them the best that I can from reading books by like Del Close and uh -huh. you know, the UCB uh, improviser, uh, that manual. So, right. so just doing that, when we're done recording, they're like, I, I don't even know what just happened. And then you go back and listen to it. And it's like just amazing because you just made something out of nothing. And like you said, it could be bad, but the, when it hits, when it's great, it's like just seamless. It is. It's amazing. So my next thing what we're going to get into is, uh, so when do you want to, when do you want to start writing? Uh, well, you know, what I, what I kind of realized later was, um, uh, that I had been writing at second city. That, that That's what we were doing. Yeah. Uh, I didn't look at it that way. And when I came out to L.A., I just wanted to be an actor. That's all I, you know, that's all my focus was. Um, and what I've realized now is I should have been writing all along. So I didn't start writing until a little later. And then uh, at one point I wrote a feature that won a um, screenwriting competition. And that gave me a little... Uh, uh, little validation kind of you know oh, wow. encouragement and which one was that well it hasn't been made yet i'm, I'm still trying to get it made oh wow it, it, it had been optioned it was optioned by a couple of times and then came back to me it wasn't made but what it did do was it gave me a sample script and from that i got uh my first uh like uh well writing writing assignment on a show and I wrote for a show called um, uh, Second Noah, which was a uh, an hour family drama on ABC. Okay. And it was, and that was a great experience. I was just on staff, and you know, so from then I started. I kept writing after that, and I've done a number of things. So how long? How long did you have the idea for All Stars? Oh I, well. All Stars uh, is a movie I did. Uh, that was a real love project, you know, uh, a real passion project. And it was, it's because it's really my life. I, my daughter, when she was little, like five, started, we started playing softball. I mean, she, and, and I had her in, there was a, a Santa Monica softball league here that was then the Bobby Sox. And she would be, she was in the minis and which, was, and you know, you'd hit it off the tee and they'd run it in clusters to the ball <laughs> and then no, and the runners would be running the wrong way or out into the field. And it was just so the cutest thing. And then we, from there, we just went all the way through rec ball all the way up until, and I coached her all the way through. And then into uh, club ball and travel ball, and ultimately she got recruited for college. She was very good. No she was a pitcher. And but you know she worked at it. It was it was she we 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 did all the club stuff, uh, and and from that experience I met all these parents you know, parents and, and coaches and umpires. And it's just, you know, I, I, I got to know the, and, and not only know, I was one of those 
sports parents who, you know, and, and the movie is really, it's about a 10, All-Stars is about a, a 10 year old little girl softball team. But it's really about the parents. It's about the outrageous behavior of sports parents. <clears throat> and um, I, I had the idea, I knew when we were in the middle of it, this would be a great movie. Oh, yeah. Um, something, you know. And, and so I knew that. And then I was such a fan of the Christopher Guest movies, um, like Best in Show. Yeah. And, I, and, you know, coming from Second City, I thought, well, geez, he does that so great. Why is he the only one who can do that, who can do these, like, mockumentaries? I, I, think, I know how to do that. I can do that, too, I think. So, and, and so I knew how to do it as a movie that way, if, because that allowed me to a lot of things. It allowed me to shoot mul with multiple cameras, and I could do it quickly. I didn't have what Christopher Guest had, which was a bigger budget and yeah. the, the luxury of time. So I had to shoot it very quickly. But what I did have was um, I had a lot of contacts with the improv world. And so I knew, I, I actually wrote the movie with about half the cast in mind. You know, you I did. wrote it. I, I wrote, I, I wrote a role, the, the Fred Willard's role, I wrote for him. Mike Haggerty's role, I wrote for him um, with them in mind. You know? Yeah. And, and then a lot, and Richard Kind. Uh, Richard replaced me at Second City when I left. Oh, wow. And I knew, you know, and I, I actually had just gone to see his play on Broadway before I did the movie. And I said, listen, Richard, he goes, what are you, so what are you doing, Lance? What are you doing? And I said, uh, well, I'm, I'm working on trying to find financing for a movie I want to do. And he goes, oh, that's great. And I said, well, uh, you know, if I can find the financing, I, you know, I'd like you to take a look at it. He goes, whatever you want, whatever you want, I'm, I'm happy to do it. So when I got the financing, I called him and I, uh, I said, Richard, I got it. I need you to, I want you to do this, this dad in the movie. And he goes, send me the script. So I sent him the script and he goes, all right, I'll do it. That's fine. Well, I'll do it. And then, so we, I bring him in and I get a call from him and, and a, a, after he gets the, the schedule and he goes, what are you talking about? I, I have to do all these days. What are you talking about? I thought I was just going to do it like a day. And I said, Richard, did you read the script? And he goes, what do you mean? I, I'm on vacation. I'm out of here with my kids. I thought I was just going to do a day. And I said, no, I need you. And so he, he, he kind of un, uh, grudgingly, he did it. And he was great at it. Oh, he was. But he was so Richard, you know. He was, he's great. It starts with whatever you need to, what do you mean? How many days? <laughs> Jeff Garland tells a story. He was on Pete Holmes' podcast, and Pete asked him about, like, working with Richard. And uh, yeah. Jeff Garland told about a story, like, after they shot for the day, he was, like, getting something to eat, like, offset. And he saw Richard across the street, and he, like, he was like, Richard, come over here. And he, like, almost acted like he didn't know him and shot it from across the street at him. <laughs> oh, man. But that, that cast had the perfect parents, like – I love Seth Morris. He's a great improviser. Oh, my gosh. Great. Yeah. Him and Nicole Sullivan, like the parents, like going through Little League. Perfect. Like when I was growing up, they were the parents that, oh, my kid just wants to play a sport. Oh, I have to get the expensive bat. And that right. was so great. And well, he took they, the <laughs> – their, their arc in the movie was – they actually had a little arc where – Oh, yeah. At first they, they – you know, they just wanted their daughter to have a good time. And yeah. They just played Oh, she can make friends, and it'll be social. It'll be wonderful. And then they get caught up in it, and by the end of it, they are so freaking competitive. Yeah, yeah. So funny, and they just played it so beautifully. They're, yep. they're both they're both great in it. Oh yeah, when he takes the bat from you, I didn't pay three hundred dollars for him to take grounders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's exactly. great. And now the whole time, how long was the shoot? We put, we shot the whole thing in. Uh, let's see, uh, 16 days. Wow. Yeah. 
yeah, 16 days. It was very quick. Um, and, but, you know, again, I had such great improvisers. I know, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Mary Lynn Raskub, um, uh, Angela Kinsey from The yeah. Office. Yeah, she's great. Oh, my gosh. Sam, Sam Richardson, that's great that he was in it. He's yeah. hilarious. I love him. Sam Richardson, he's another Second City guy. Molly, yeah. Molly Erdman. Molly um, is a Second City gal. She's, oh, wow. She was from Second City and just – such a great improviser she's so good uh and i knew she'd be great for it she's another one that i brought in early before i even had the financing and said molly i want you to do this role i have a, a role that i'm writing with you in mind i hope you can do it and uh she did it and actually she it, it, she was pregnant and she called me and said, you know, I really, I want to do it. So when I finally had the financing, I called her and said, okay, this is it. Because before she said, sure, I'd love to. And I said, this is it. We're ready to go. And she goes, oh, geez, listen, I'm, you know, I totally understand if you don't want to use me now, but I'm pregnant and I show. And I, and I thought about it. I hadn't written it that way. Yeah. But, well, you know, these are kids and, and sports and a sports parent. Well, there's no reason you can't be pregnant. So Sure. And and so she came in and she was pregnant. And then Jenica was pregnant too. And I hadn't written in her as pregnant either. So all of a sudden I have all these pregnant women in the movie, but it works perfectly for the movie. Oh yeah. And Molly was just, Molly is just, you know, a spectacular improviser. Yeah. You know, the whole cast was, especially, you know, like you said before, you were able to do it in 16 days. So you yeah. needed people that are ready to work and go on the fly and not be. Well, that's it. I needed people with that skill set. And everybody yeah. I brought in, I had that conversation with them and explained mm -hmm. that um, because the little girls who are in the movie aren't actresses. They're actual softball players. Oh, cool. Or they, you know, they all had different degrees of ability. Yeah. But they're, they're from, they actually played softball in the Santa Monica League. And oh, awesome. They, not every girl at that level is a great softball player, but I wanted that. Yeah. But it was more important to me that they know how to play softball than they know how to act. Cause I didn't have time to teach them softball. And, but what I did want to do is shoot it in such a way, almost like a reality show so that they would just forget the cameras and just act naturally. And yeah. I, and I wanted them to treat me as their coach and their actors as their parents you know, and I told the, parent, the the actors when we met, I said, what we're going to do is you treat them as, as your kids. And whenever you're on set, think that you, be in character and be dealing with them as if you are their parents, because I've got, cam I'm going to have cameras everywhere and you don't know what I'm going to use because I'm going to do it all in the editing room. And I want you to deal with them realistically so that they will not even think about being in a movie and that's what i tried to do although the, the little girls you know they knew the cameras were there and they kept coming up to me and going is it are we just shooting the movie now and you know i'm going just forget it forget it but they they were all great the little girls were fantastic and it's really a funny movie i hope everybody sees it oh no i loved it it was great richard Thanks. richard kind with his daughter Huh? Richard oh, Kahn yeah. and his chart, and he's just sitting in the chair. That, <laughs> he's like, that comes from a real guy. Uh, you know, I mean, I knew this guy who was the stats guy on, on our team. And he wow. kept stats for everybody. And Richard just, he owned it. You know, he came oh, in yeah. and he was so good. He was so good as the stats guy. And Richard brought his own stuff to it. I mean, for some reason, he had the hat and the sunglasses. <laughs> And he insisted on a cigar. And I said, well, I don't want you lighting a cigar. And he goes, I don't need to light it. I don't need it. I'll just use a cigar. That's fine. And he had a cigar the whole time. <laughs> like, you know, it's just it, these affectations that really work. I love that his wife, like, was never seen and didn't come out of the house. Never saw her. Yeah. Never saw her. Yeah. Oh, and, man. You know, well, that was, again – from life where that the same stats guy i never saw his wife i always knew that there she never came to the game she never came to a practice 
it, you know, we, you know, did he do something to him? Where, what's going on? But nobody asked, and that's just who he was. That's amazing. Now, when you wrote the script, did you have like a, like a line that said like famous actor, or did you always have John Goodman in mind? No. Well, what I did was uh, when I first wrote it, I don't even think he, John even knows this, but uh, when I first wrote it, I had, I wrote it in the script, it said, George Clooney, and in parentheses, or the biggest star I can get. And I didn't know George Clooney. You know, I don't know George Clooney, but it was that idea that I yeah. wanted. I wanted a movie star, you know. So I, I, I know John, though. Um, John and I did uh, dinner theater together before we ever did anything. Oh, wow. Dinner, to, dinner theater together back in Ohio. And um, I... I, I had called John early and said, uh, er, way early, months, months before, and said, listen, John, I'm going to do this thing, and uh, I'd love it if you'd, you know, check it out. I'm going to send you the script, check it out, and uh, tell me what you think. And he emailed me back and said, Lance, uh, you got gold here. And I said, oh, thanks so much. I'm glad you like it. And then I hit him with it. I said, you know, I'd love you to do the thing. He goes, oh, well, when are you doing it? I told him when I was doing it. And he said, I would love to. I can't. I'm, um, I'm, I'm shooting something else. I can't do it. I'm, or I, I have a commitment in New York. I'm, whatever. I can't, you know, I'm, I'm not available. And I said, oh, okay, thanks. Well, anyway, thanks. And we were, we started we were coming down and now we started to shoot and I still didn't have anybody committed to it. Wow. I had nobody. And, uh, I somehow I just kept having faith that something would happen. And we are all in like the third or third day of shooting. And I, I had the, I never turned my phone on while, cause I'm directing it. Yeah. And I have the phone in my pocket and we're, like between takes and I feel my phone vibrate and I pull it out and it's, I see John Goodman and I, I hit it and I say, hello. I said, John, I hope you're calling me to tell me you can do this. And he goes, well, listen, uh, I can do it if you could shoot it on Friday. And we had such a tight schedule that, uh, I, I had, I had the whole, um, you know, schedule blocked out. Everything was blocked out. And we had him, his role was shooting on Saturday. And I could not move it. I couldn't move it because I had different locations. Yeah. And I, I'm on the phone and I think about it for a second. I go, okay, we'll move it. And I couldn't. But we did. We moved, we moved things, even though we, and we had to make remake deals with the, the field that we didn't really have it that day. But we brought and he came in and he was fantastic. He was there the whole day. His agent said, you can only have him for three hours. And I said, okay, okay, okay. No, nope, I'll get him in and out. And I had the crew on alert saying, listen, we've got to shoot him and get him out, turn the cameras around. We're going to shoot this way, shoot this way, get him, shoot all over him. And then we've got to release him. I'm not going to, you know, screw him over because I promised his agent. So he comes in and I go, listen, John, I know you have to be out, you know, like by noon. And he goes, what are you talking about? And I go, well, your agent said, he goes, oh, forget that. And he goes, ah, you know, what, however long. And he hung out the whole day. He's such a mensch. He is, he's the, one of the best guys in the world. Uh, I can't say enough about him. And he saved my bacon. You know, he came in and did that. Yeah. That was so cool. It was such a great ending. You didn't yeah. go with the happy ending. It was so great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert, but yeah. Yeah. You're right. No, a lot of people would say, you know, I, I thought it was good. I thought she's going to hit that home run. Yeah, and, I know. You know, it's going to be like Bad News Bear. And I go, yeah, you know, and they go, and I, I did a lot of, um, uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, we, we did a lot of um, sh screenings. Before, you know, at, at film festivals. We yeah. did a lot of film festival circuit. And I get a, we'd do Q&As afterwards, and a lot of questions would come in. You know, did you ever 
think about having her actually be the hero and hit the ball. And I said, never. I never considered it because I played the sport and I know how it turns out. And this is real life. Yes. You know, that's, it's much more realistic this way. Definitely. Especially in baseball. If you're a 300 hitter, you fail 70% of the time. So that does make a lot of sense. And that little girl was not a 300 hitter. <laughs> she wasn't even a hitter. <laughs> no, she wasn't a, she wasn't a one hitter. I know. And I love her character too. Cause that was a, that was a kid I had every year on little league. Of like course. a kid that had like a mysterious illness that would never come or just a kid that would just show up for like, flute, flute yeah. Lessons. yeah, flute lessons. Oh man. Well, Lance, this is so much fun. Oh, thanks, Doug, man. I'm glad, I'm glad you found me. How